Yes, welcome to Ray Soto capstone presentation for the California Master Beekeeper Program. Ray, please tell us a little bit about yourself and give us just a thumbnail of what your capstone presentation will look like over the next 30 minutes and take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, I am a data analyst in the Department of Epidemiology at UCLA. My day job is working in data for an HIV study. This project comes uh, from my involvement with Bruin Beekeepers at UCLA. It is a student-led project that established UCLA's first apiary and is probably the most robust entomology project on campus because UCLA is not known for entomology. I think we have two entomologists on campus and they don't actually do a lot of field work. They do uh, mostly research on behaviors and, and things of that nature. So we, I think we, we are offering UCLA something that it hasn't seen before. And I am hoping for it to be a point of entry for UCLA to do more work in entomology or even expand into any animal science, herpetology or ornithology, although we, we do have a few ornithologists on campus, but it's not very robust. Uh, students don't flock to UCLA to go into those programs. So this was offered to me by another camp. Uh, she She's an apprentice, but she is the director for the horticultural program at, at UCLA's extension offerings. And she wanted to add an apiculture class to that program. It's a certification program in in, uh, in horticulture. And so we put it together and we did. So in partnership with them, they essentially gave me the template syllabus to get started with. So they have all the policy and UCLA safeguards and all of that in there already. So that's something I did not have to work on. I just had to add scheduling, grading, and uh, anything that I would need for specifically for the class and anything that the students would need to know. And so that's what I did. So the present, so that was the project is establishing that curriculum, that first course, what it looked like and what expectations sh students should have. I'll be showing you the slides that I used, which incorporate the camp because above all, this was a camp centered course. Students were told if you take this course, you can then apply to be to be a, a camp member and pass that online exam, whether it be the ambassador or apprentice level. And so integrated into the lectures and all is the apprentice study guide. And I'll be showing you that and how I integrated those. Uh, the book that was used was the Beekeeper's Handbook that I think was originally used or at least referenced to in the original study guide. And so it, it worked really well to be able to, to integrate those slides as supplementary. So let me go through the project. So I have divided up into the syllabus, the lectured slides, which I, I'll only do the first three weeks because those are the, the, the unique ones. Class pictures, most of my presentations are going to be in those because it, it's show and tell kind of a thing. And then I'm really excited about the student report, the, the, the course survey. Students essentially say what it was that happened throughout the summer that speaks to the project's success. And I'll note that as, as we move along. So the syllabus, again, is a UCLA template. So I need you to, to just add a few things here and there. The class itself was structured. It's an, it was a 10 week course with an 11th week as a final exam. So full 11 weeks, which were great because I broke it up into five weeks in the hives and five weeks on Zoom with lectures. Odd weeks, we were up in the apiary even weeks we were on Zoom. 
So here's all the necessary stuff from the syllabus that the students needed to, to understand and go. But again, I mentioned the camp throughout. This is what you're expecting. This is a camp centered, the book, the website, the website that I use as supplementary. These are lecture series from the National Honey Show. Fabulous lectures on there. I, I was able to find one lecture to supplement each of the three chapters that we broke up the weeks into. So it worked out really, really great. Five quizzes. Uh, that were due on each of the five even weeks because that's when the chapters the reading was due and then the hive dives were the when we were in the apiary they were graded on their data collection and I'll show you what that looked like as well and then the final exam was essentially the practical exam and I did use the current apprentice rubric for the practical exam Uh, the grading scale and this was this was not my doing this was actually UCLA extension this was the grading scale that they expected a few things so safety was always a of concern not only because we're working with the bees but we're also on the roof of a building so not easily accessible there's a lot of equipment up there uh, there was a lot of things that needed to be said and done but as you'll see on the survey report, the students did feel safe and they felt comfortable and confident being on the roof. So I'm, I'm happy that I was able to get that across. Uh, so again, so this is all the university stuff. I didn't have to worry about the harassment and the safety and all that. It was already included. The schedule broke it down into each week and what they should expect, including the videos that they were expected to, to review. Uh, lecture slides. So the very first day, it was in the apiary, but we started off in the classroom and it was an introduction. Who are you? This is who I am. Introduction to camp. What they, were, what they would expect in the apiary, all the safety precautions, what they would need to do to be successful in the class and what we were doing today. So the today part was part of, you need to plan before you get into the hives. And this is what we're doing today. I took equipment into the classroom. This is a deep, this is a medium, this is a hive tools. So it was really quick, but I knew it was falling on novice ears so it was don't you don't need to know this now i'm going to review this when we get into the hives and now you'll know what i'm talking about but i did want to do the safety part of it in the classroom first especially the if you get stung don't overreact don't fling your arms around you you have a hive tool probably in your hand you don't want to hit your student with it so it was that kind of conversation So here's my introduction to the camp. I give them everything about the camp, including, and this is where I start in, introducing the study guide. Noting to them that the symbol for the camp would be on the top right corner of all the, of all the slides that reference the study guide, including the pages. And I'll note that as we move along. I explain to them the apiaries because we do help manage three apiaries. Uh, one on campus and two off campus, and we help with an additional apiary that isn't managed by us, but we partner with other camp uh, beekeepers in the area at a, at this fourth apiary in Caste. So again, safety, closed toed shoes, not only because I don't want them getting stung, but on the roof that we were, that the apiary is located, there's a lot of gravel, and I didn't want them any, anyone getting gravel into their feet and stubbing their toes on equipment and things like that. So a quick familiarity with some safety precautions. Uh, what they needed to do for success in the class for those A's, by the way, everyone did great. Everyone received an A, they earned an A in the class. That first day, and it was really fortunate 
the timing of everything. And I'll explain later, but everything just happened to fall right into place the entire summer, including that first day. They, I was able to assign everyone a hive. As I went, I did all the inspections that first day. As I approached each hive, I explained how to approach the hive, what I was seeing, what I was doing. And then I asked, who wants this hive? And somebody would volunteer, okay, I'll take that one, I'll take that one. And as they volunteered for that hive, I'd have them come up next to me. And then I gave them each the history of that hive. When it was established, the data for the past two, three inspections and what we were going to look for uh, at that very moment. All hives on that very first day, July 1st, had been requeened a week before. So it was very fortunate that that first day that they were getting into, we were actually making sure that the queen took and that she was laying eggs. So it was, it was just very fortunate, the timing. Uh, so I did that for all nine hives and got them introduced to their own hive. For the lecture part of the course, a review of the chapters, I took snippets of each of the chapters, but really a lot of it came from, and here's one of the slides from the study guide. Again, as I mentioned, at the top corner, I told them if it has a symbol, it comes from the study guide. And I kept the page reference of the study guide so they can go back to the study guides if they needed to, to refresh their memory about where it is in the study guide. And that's those were the lectures. We would review each of the chapters. I would pull the necessary slides from the study guide to supplement their readings with page numbers. And we would discuss everything in, in the study guide as well as questions they had from the book readings themselves and the videos that they watched. So I will scroll down to the third week because the third week being in the apiary, it was the second and the last time we started in the classroom first. And again, so this time was their second time in the apiary and I wanted to make sure that they were comfortable going into the their hives. They needed to have a plan. What was today's plan? Well, the last time we were in there, we, we know that we were queen right you saw eggs, you saw this, so now you're going to be seeing this and this. As fortunate as it was, we requeened on the 24th. The first day of class was on the 1st. So as I was explaining to them, this first day, if you saw eggs, by the 4th day, those eggs are going to be larva. By the ninth day, they're going to be capped. And so they were able to affiliate the day of the month with the time cycle of uh, the development of bees. And so that helped them put everything into perspective because they just had to think of what day of the month it was and determine where they were at in their developmental stage. So it was really fortunate that that worked out that way. Uh, we went over what they were going to be seeing because for the final exam, I did expect them to know and understand the differences between cat brood, uncapped brood, nectar, and pollen. Uh, among everything else, but I made sure that they understood that that's what I was going to be showing them on that day, and they were going to be uh, going along with me. We did do a sugar shake on that second day in the apiary as well. There was a hive that was unassigned to any of the students, but it was also a overly defensive colony. We, I, I had an, anticipated this colony. Uh, I was going to remove it, but I wanted to use it for practicing sugar shakes. So what I had students do is they each approached the hive, they removed the frame, took the frame away and shook it. And I gave them various methods of shaking bees off a frame or taking bees off a frame. And I told them that you can use any one of these. They just have to go into this bucket. Once they're in the bucket, you use the scoop to scoop out the bees and you do your sugar shake. And I used every method. So this was a really strong colony. It had 20 frames, I think, well 
if I try to remember right, it was about 12 frames of bees. So really strong colonies. So they each were able to take one frame each and practice taking uh, bees off of that and practice their sugar shakes just, just with that one hive. And that went really well. So I will now, so that, and that's just the rest of the weeks and all the lectures for all the chapters. It was very fortunate also that the book has 15 chapters. So I was able to evenly break out for each of the weeks that we had a lecture that they had to read three chapters per, per week for those. So this is our setup, our teaching ground on in the apiary. 10 hives. This extra hive here is just a demo hive. So we have frames in there. Uh, if we needed to practice something before going into the hive itself, this is the one we used. If students had questions uh, or needed some other supplement, we would use this hive here. Uh, but it was also fortunate that we could have drawn comb in this in this hive if somebody needed needed it or needed some extra equipment, we would go to this demo in the middle. The spacing here, it could be anywhere from five to six feet. So some of these are larger than others. And then the distance between the first and second row is about 10 feet. So we had plenty of room to work around. And I'm thinking this is how I'm going to maintain it. I've already spoken to the director for the program for the horticulture program. And I do want to limit the students to 10 because it maintains this safety space where students are comfortable moving around the hives, but nobody's bumping into any of the hives either. And so they have plenty of room to go move around. And when we group around, because I, I did have some very fortunate happenings during the summer, where we had to, I had to essentially do a at the moment lecture. So this is the remnants of an unsuccessful usurpation of a colony. Uh, I saw this as well as a whole bunch of bees on the bottom of this entrance, and I thought, yeah, this this was a, a colony that tried to take over this 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 hive here. And so I dug into here as the students were watching and I found the queen. She was in right in the middle here. And so that turned into a impromptu lecture about what that means and what it looks like here on the floor is where the dead bees are. So I explained that you know, they, this, this colony successfully defended their hive from these invaders. And the remnants were here along with the queen. And so he had a, a great conversation about that. And I asked him, what, what should we do? And so there was different uh, ideas about what can be done and what should be done. Ultimately, we decided, well, let's do a, a split. I'm going to teach you how to introduce a queen and do a split. And so that's what we did with the colony, with that queen that, that we saw in there. And so we took her and that ended up a second impromptu lecture. So we took frames of bees from the hive that's behind here that you can't see from this from this view, but that is a really strong colony. So we took some nurse bees, put them into the bucket here, moved them into this hive box here and installed the queen that we found in that small cluster. And so they got a an in live view of what a split looks like, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, and all of those notes. Uh, this is a picture of a practical exam in progress. Here I am with my notes, scoring with the score sheet, the rubric, as I mentioned, from camp. And this is a student. He's doing his practical exam on his hive. By the way, this is the hive that successfully uh, repelled the invasion and some students that are watching. Uh, students were very good about 
wanting to have more time in the hives that they decided on week 10, which should have been a lecture on Zoom, half of them wanted to come back and do their practical exam then, and then save the lecture for after that. And so they all agreed to do that. And so weeks 10 and 11, we ended up splitting. Half the students did their practical exam on week 10, and then the other half came back on week 11 to do their exam, which worked out great for timing. So here's another practical exam taking place. I have my rubric in hand, making sure I, I cross off, as I mentioned, things that I'm listening for. This is our smoke cart uh, where the smokers are laid. And so this is something that's set up before the students come, although this is already after they, they've come around. Uh, but it's uh, off the ground where they get to, to do what they need to do. Uh, this picture shows that I still need some work to teach them on saving because they keep leaving the flammable stuff right next to the smokers. Whereas when we start, I usually start it off at the table uh, for setup. These are the sugar shake kits that we're using. So they get to take one of the kits if they're going to be doing a sugar shake and they get to choose their, their hive tools that they'll be using for that day. The sugar shake kits look like this. So it's a bin for them to shake the sugar into the cup to take bees from. This is a sample tube that we're using where I'm already putting some sugar, powdered sugar into. So they don't have to be messing with that. It's already done for them. They just have to put this into and sift it into the screen. I've also added to each of our shaking jars lines that determine the approximate amount of bees. So I have a 300 line, a 600 line, a 900 line, and a 1200 line. Not that they're going to go to a 1200, but it gives them an idea of how many bees they have in there uh, so that they can get a good ratio of mites to bees. Our closets of equipment, our PPE, that, that's right before you enter the apiary. This is found in that area. And thanks to Camp for sending the grafting kit because on one of those days that we were in the apiary, I was able to pull a drone frame, bring it back to the classroom and demonstrated grafting. And I uh, gave them the opportunity to do pool larva from cells. Uh, these are, are, are of course much older than we would actually pull, but I told them they can pull any of them and, and test out their skills. Uh, this one didn't make it, so this was a obvious failure that ended up on the table and not in the cup. This is the drone frame, and we had brood in every stage, including egg. We had a little older to much older brood, so they got to pick and choose how old they wanted to, to take the brood, but I did emphasize the age of the, the ones that they would actually be grafting it if we were actually grafting. The form that we use for collecting data, uh, it's laminated. So it's easy to be able to use the dry erase markers on. And this is washable. If it gets honey on it, well, I should say when it gets honey on it and when it gets wax and all kinds of sticky stuff on it, this can easily be cl uh, cleaned up and reused. We had one beekeeper with us in this as a student. She already has three hives at her home. And so I decided not to give her one of the Langstroths. I gave her our top bar. And she was very excited about that because she hadn't had any experience with it. So she was very appreciative of that. And she got to experience that. And so she, she did her whole coursework on that. A bit of wax moth, so they got 
to see what Max Moth looks like, both in the emerged adult form and also in all the pupil form and cocoons. Uh, this is actually from a bucket. So inside this bucket is a whole bunch of frass. And so they got to, to get a first-hand look about what that looks like. Another demo kind of a thing, impromptu lecture. So the students were able to identify on that same day two small swarms that had clustered around the apiary somewhere. Uh, so this was, a, and we found the queens. This is actually a worker just to compare for comparison. And one of them was a suboptimal queen. So I was able to share with them what that means, what it looks like, and then a regular sized well-mated queen and the size difference, uh, what they would look for and how they can tell the difference. And then finally, the student survey report. So your typical questions, but of note that I would like to share with you because it speaks to the student's experience are some of the notes. So very fun and gave us certain freedom and encouraged to make our own judgment. So I, I was very keen on showing them how I do my beekeeping, but it's up to them to come up with their own methods. They do not have to do exactly what I do. They don't have to do exactly what I say. They need to do it however it is comfortable for them. I once student said, showing trust in the students, which helped us all have fun, feel safe, and trust that we could get past our initial fears. The selected book for the source, it really opened my eyes to modern apiculture as well as the juxtaposition with our existing native pollinators. We did have many, many conversations about honeybees in the environment and what it means for our, our local native pollinators. From the very first class, I just of just getting used to being around bees and not knowing a thing compared to the last day where I felt so comfortable around the bees and could do a thorough hive inspection with a lot of attention to detail is quite a transition. We learned how to read the behavior of honeybees, how to stay calm and ex exude confidence, how to care for ourselves. Uh, we also learned that what isn't true about honeybees, which has helped me dispel common myths with family and friends. I feel confident doing hive checks and knowing the positive and negative signs I need to look for out for in order to do proper hive management. I love the fact that this course sets you up to take the camp apprentice exam when classes prepare you for real world applications or you can transfer your knowledge and gain another certifi certificate out of it. It makes the course more rewarding. I went from having zero experience with bees to now feeling comfortable and confident to inspect a hive and or tend to a hive's needs. Uh, to be able to take the care of your own hive for the duration of the course and the hands-on was priceless. And so there's several others and I'm running out of time here. Uh, but yeah, it was great, great feedback. Uh, director for the horticulture program was was very happy with the, the response because eight, eight out of, well, we actually had nine out of nine students respond but only eight fill out a survey. The ninth one actually sent me an email because she didn't get a chance to get, get into the survey. And so that's that's what I have to present to you as far as the project and its success. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Ray, that was great. I have, I think we can probably um, 